Welcome pageant family. Today we are recapping Miss Venezuela 2020. I am so excited for this episode. We got so much going on. My name is Danny Walker. If you're brand new, thank you for clicking this episode. If you love content like this, please, please, please subscribe to the channel. Also, don't forget to hit the notifications bell so that you know when I post my weekly episodes, but also so that you get notified for my special extra episodes that I like to randomly share that I like to surprise you with. So be sure to check those ones out. And if you are a fan of Miss Venezuela, then you might like this other episode that I did where I recapped and I reviewed the official pageant headshot. So check that one out right up here. That is where I'm linking it. I didn't even know when I was watching this that they were going to do a virtual pageant. I didn't hear a lot of news about this online or from pageant sources, so it was really interesting to see Venezuela's take on a virtual pageant. One thing I liked that I mentioned in my last recap for Miss Earth USA is that I really miss the opening numbers or the introductions, and I really like that they took all the contestants, they made it consistent, they shot it together, and they actually filmed each girl doing the opening number dance and doing an introduction and then they just edited all of them together so it was like okay see this can be done for virtual pageants I love that they still did the dance to Miss Venezuela it always makes me happy and I just like it it's so cute it's so fun and traditional I love it so that was really nice to see. Obviously we don't get the benefit of having great performers during the show. That would be really hard to navigate, but I don't know, maybe they'll come up with something else, but I really like that element of this show. I watched this pageant after it happened on YouTube, and I think the version that I watched was somehow edited together differently. So the order of this recap might be a little bit misplaced, so bear with me for that. And also, of course, because I don't fluently speak Spanish, I'm doing my best Best to try to understand what the contestants are saying or really what's going on for the show and that's why I honestly rely on all of you out there that are watching this to leave your comments and explain to me what's happening so that I have a better understanding of how it all works at the beginning of the show they started maybe at the beginning actually at what I saw was the beginning of the show they were giving out a lot of awards and they were doing awards for talent and I think beauty and walking and all sorts of things like that so they were doing giving out all these special awards I don't know if there's any incentive for contestants to do well there other than a trophy and a sash but do they give out prize packages or awards for these things because I'm really not sure about that one thing though is that I noticed Miss Portuguesa oh my goodness what a talented singer she stood out to me right away no. So it was no shock when she went home with the talent award. I also saw the Q&A portions with the contestants with one of the hosts and I didn't know what they were talking about. I had no idea what was going on or what the purpose of that was. So I'm going to need all of you guys out there who watched it and who fluently speak Spanish to let me know what was going on. Leave that in the comments please. During the edit that I saw, they announced the winner of Miss World Venezuela earlier in the show, which really threw me for a loop. I don't understand how he went from preliminaries to just right away announcing the winner for that or how that really worked. Maybe it was just the version that I was watching, but I expected that winner to be announced at the end. So yeah, just confused. Let's talk about swimsuits. So I always love the outfits that they put these contestants in because it's not just a boring swimsuit. As you can see this year, they were floral. They had these mesh inserts with rhinestones. They also had these little floral sashes that were attached to the back of them, which I love. And, and I just always love the styling of that. So the contestants that I noticed for this were Apure, Falcon, Guarico, did she get a fan? You notice her hair just blowing in the wind? My gosh. I don't know how to say this one. But man, can her face carry a ponytail or what? Don't say or what. Don't comment that. That is not nice. She's stunning. Miss Nueva Esparta. Big fan favorite. Love her little hair shake in there. Portuguesa. I just thought she was so, so stunning. Just just gorgeous. Just, I loved her. I'm such a fan. K 
killing it. She was killing it with confidence. I loved that. What if I just said the names like this? Region, Guyana. I have, str I struggle with that one. I don't even know, but really beautiful face. That's what I wrote down for my notes for her. Sucre, oh, oh my gosh. Very, very beautiful. She was one of my faves. I miss that because we don't have a big stage that we have shorter swimsuit walks. So I really appreciated when they did the double take of each contestant. So they kind of got these two mini walks at different angles and I, I was glad to see that. In swimsuit, I thought Zulia was very confident, but she wasn't over the top. And I feel like it's hit or miss in Venezuela. Like sometimes the contestants are a little bit more, the winners, the queens, are a little bit more over the top in their presentation. And then sometimes they're just really relaxed and cool and confident, and then they just keep advancing. I don't know why that is. I think it just says something about how with a different panel of judges, the results are just gonna be different every single time. Now, let's move past swim real quick because the thing about this year's show were the gowns. Everybody was telling me the gowns are fabulous and boy oh boy, they did not disappoint. So, I'm getting really excited about it right now. On Swatagi, I don't know how to say her name, and Swatagi, someone help me. But this gown reminded me so much of the gown that I said I would put Kyra in for Miss Universe if I was the Miss USA stylist. It looked like the gold version of what I envisioned for Kyra. Just check it out, look at this comparison. I know my Photoshop skills are not the best. Actually, I don't even know how to Photoshop. But this, this gown reminded me so much of that and you know what? It was as I thought. It was fabulous. It looked amazing on stage, so. I stand with my choice for my hypothetical gown for Kyra, which you can actually check out the gown I would have put her in and then our other past five Miss USAs in another episode. I loved Apure, oh my goodness. That gown with the one fringe sleeve is giving me so much upcycle inspiration. Y'all are probably gonna see me wear something like that soon because I loved it so, so much. That slicked back hair, just it was a really unique gown that honestly, it wouldn't be something that I would think of to put somebody in for a pageant, but loved it. She just, she worked it. Miss Carabobo, oh my goodness. The gown itself wasn't super unique. It was a sheer beaded gown. For those little frilly sleeves, oh my gosh, they were so cute, so feminine. They were sheer. It was just such a nice small detail and touch that did end up making that gown unique. And honestly, at this point during the show, I was just so distracted by the gowns. It was really hard for me to focus on the contestants and their performances because my jaw was on the floor. Well, really like on the table. I was like, oh, like that. It's true. I was sitting watching at a table. Go ahead, this, oh my gosh, her hair, someone buy me a wig. Oh, I cannot with this long straight hair look. I just want to achieve it so badly. I just don't have the volume for it, frankly, and I'm sad about it. And I absolutely loved her and the entire look and my eyes were bulging out of my head for that performance and that gown and that walk and that styling because I was like, this, this is everything I imagine. This is what I want to see for pageants. <laughs> Next queen, and I'm calling her a queen because really they all are. They are all so fabulous. Just amazing gown. When she walked out, the sleeves, the structured shoulders just do it for me. And then I noticed very quickly, it looked like she wouldn't be able to move in it. And I was like, ooh, this could be a little bit awkward. But then, surprise, she takes it off. Gosh, it's just beautiful. And there's another beautiful gown underneath. Like what? That's cool. Wow. Wow. Okay. Venezuela. For universe, I'm expecting something like this. I just want you to know now. I don't know who I gotta send a letter to or inform or what manager I gotta speak to. But listen, Venezuela, I am waiting for this in Miss Universe. I just cannot wait. Falcon, oh my gosh, this did it for me. So I love vintage styles. And she had this 1950s inspired overcoat. It was a beautiful shade of yellow. Her hair was up and the hair up made a lot of sense for me because when she revealed the gown, it was a lot it was a lot so I don't think she needed to have all that hair down but I loved how much it was like it was over the top but in the best way and we saw these hip cutouts which are more seen in Latin dance competitions so it was interesting to see that style on a pageant stage but I think it worked it was a lot and I loved every moment of it 
At this point, I'm just jumping out of my skin because I was so excited. How did you feel? Did you love it too? If you watched it, have you watched it? My goodness, if you haven't, you need to. It is a must. It is a must see. And uh, yeah, just go check that out. Cuatico was perfection. Her gown was just enough. It was not too over the top. It was just everything. And, and at this point, I did not even have a favorite. I'm sorry to say, but I didn't because they were all so amazing. Now this gown reminds me of something that you would see in the US. It's very Sherry Hill reminiscent, but actually it reminds me of this other designer. I wanna say, you know what? I'm not even gonna say the name. I'm just gonna have to go find the designer. But it reminded me of this other designer and gown that I've seen on Instagram a few times. And I think that the style was really safe. I would have preferred it if we had more fabric on bottom. I think it would have been a little bit more dramatic, but still great color on her, looked fabulous. Would you please do me a huge favor? Would you screenshot this episode, post it to an Instagram story or a post, tag and hashtag me at Danny Walker and follow me on Instagram? It would mean so much to me. I love hearing what you think about these episodes and sharing all of your thoughts with my followers. Miss Lada's gown. Okay, friends, listen, I think there was a mix up. I think that this was the gown that Chesley was supposed to wear to Miss Universe. Honestly, there must have been a mistake at the Sherry Hill factory and they sent Chesley that one, but really she should have been wearing this beautiful mirrored masterpiece. This was an amazing style, amazing style. And, and I think that there was just a little bit of confusion. This is probably, friends, what Chesley was supposed to wear to Miss Universe. I think it is. I'm just gonna assume that now. Oh my gosh, the feather boa coming out, Oh. Oh, it just, it just thrills my heart. And then she just tosses it off stage and then the cameraman shows the gown reveal and they start with a close-up of the boa and then bring her into focus. Just brilliant camera work. Let's just claps for our cameraman. Loved it. Great creative direction there. Everybody was talking about Nueva Esparta online just everywhere and that she was predicted to win and so i was waiting for a big show i was waiting for something amazing when she walked out for a gown but i think that her gown was really safe i think that because these other contestants really amped it up that she didn't stand out as much as she possibly could have like she didn't just take the crown right then and there right it's, it's not an easy competition but still looked beautiful still looked lovely and obviously huge fan favorite Portuguesa was one of my favorites and I do think once again her gown was pretty safe for me It seemed like something that we've seen in pageants before something close to it And I don't think that's really a fault of hers, but it's just that these other contestants. Oh my gosh with these gowns These designers that's that's who deserves the credit thumbs up for you know Give this episode a thumbs up if you're just like yes for these designers because they're incredible They need their own award show frankly Loved this gown, my goodness. This is actually more of what I expect to see on the Miss Venezuela stage. It makes more sense to me. These beautiful structured pieces that look really difficult to walk in. And she really pulled this off. I really love the horsehair hem detail and how there were rhinestones on that too. But this gown, I feel like you really can't even appreciate it unless you're closer to it. But it was really beautiful on stage. Wow, look at this gown. It's a masterpiece. Look at the tiny mirror details. I can't even imagine how long that would take to glue or sew onto a piece like that but it was it was stunning and it was incredible i love that feather trim on the wrist too it was just i just want to put these gowns on so badly the queen miss Ulia. oh my gosh that gown wow okay so i love when we can take an element of a vintage style so that neck and those enlarged shoulders reminded me of something we would see in the 80s to early 90s but then in order to modernize this style we had that really open and low drop neck the low drop back but then we also had these rhinestones that were just drooping across the back which was so beautiful and then her body in the gown out of all the contestants i just noticed her shape in that dress and it really complimented her. But what a fabulous, fabulous gown. I can't even imagine how gorgeous that would be under real stage lights and to see that in person. Then in the edit that I saw, I don't know if this is correct, but we saw Aragua's gown and that was really beautiful and it was very over the top. But really the styling did it for me. That perfect hair, her bright red lip on her fair skin tone. I feel like Venezuela always selects one queen that has that look, that porcelain skin to send to an international pageant. 
By the way, if you are looking for your perfect evening gown, then please take advantage of my free resource. It's a gown checklist. And it's all the things that I look for when I was dressing myself for pageants, but also now when I dress my own coaching clients. So it's a really big help and it's gonna give you an idea of things you need to consider and look for in an evening gown for a competition. So just click the description below and take advantage of that free download. This year, the top 10 got questions. And I used Google Translate to try to translate these, so we're gonna go through these pretty quick. Lada got asked a question along the lines of being a role model to young women and her experiences at Miss Venezuela. She said something along the lines that the contestants are considered an inspiration to the girls of Venezuela and the world because they are performing despite adversities. They're demonstrating that Venezuelan women can deal with each of the challenges that they face and that's what they're showing to the world. Guarico, she was asked, if you were the first woman president of Venezuela, what would be your approach to generating positive change and why? She said to focus on education from home for future generations. If we wanna change the nation, we must work with children because they are the future of the country, especially in Venezuela. We have gone through more difficulties than we should, which is why we should educate values at home. Nueva Esparta, I thought that she got the appropriate question just for who she is, because she is such a fan favorite. So she was asked about social media networks gaining more importance in establishing favorite contestants, which she is one. And what do you think about the social networks determining a winner and why? And she says, it seems to me that social media has become a fundamental part of our lives in Venezuela. And I feel very honored by the support I received from social media networks. However, I do feel that for a contest like Miss Venezuela, where you have an incredible career and great opportunities, that you should have a judges panel with necessary knowledge to choose the person that can represent Venezuela in the best way internationally. So I think that she had a solid answer for that. I thought it was well done. And I like that she acknowledged the support that she does have. Miss Venezuela is not only characterized by looking at a country, but it is watched by millions of people around the world. If you could take a message to those people of other nations about Venezuelan women, what would that message be? She said, the image of Venezuelan women is beautiful. Each of us would tell you that Venezuelan women are responsible, resilient, enterprising, fighters, responsible socially, and above all, a vision of the future. She is a tireless fighter for her dreams that always seeks the happiness of herself and her relatives. That woman has a warm heart and a friendly hand and hug for you at the moment that everyone needs them. If chosen as your queen, I would be the example of that for the world. And I really liked that answer. I thought that that was just a great way to share her thoughts. This was a really interesting question. It was something about explaining to a blind man what you currently see on this planet. I love what she said, something like this. When we cry, when we kiss, our eyes aren't open because the most beautiful things are felt with the heart. I would explain to a blind man everything I can see through the beautiful melody, through senses he knows, like touch, and explain what he can feel from a hug of his mother. And for me, heaven is that he would hug me and without doubt that would be the best. So obviously a really rough translation, but you can kind of get the picture of it. I just like the idea of what she was saying. As time goes by, people with physical disabilities or intellectual disabilities are participating more in society. What's your message to these people at this time? I thought this was a solid answer. I love knowing that we're living in a society that is more inclusive every day and proposes better measures for equality. I would tell them to fight every day for more opportunities within society to use their abilities. What builds a society is harmony, acceptance, and non-discrimination. Loved it, love, love, love that message. And I just, it was just, yeah, obviously, obviously top five. What is your position in the face of racial discrimination and xenophobia today? She said, I do not agree with everything happening in the world. I believe, as I've said before, we are all children of God and we must have the same rights. We are brothers. We all have the rights to life. We all have something to do that makes us unique and special and authentic. And that's why we're highlighting each one of us in their own light around the world. 
rough Google translation at the end, still a great message. What would you answer to someone who tells you that beauty pageants are against the feminist movement that is developing in society? Common question. I would say that beauty contestants are showing different parts of what we're already used to seeing. Since beauty is only anticipating us, we fear a woman who can generate a positive impact on society, who can be a leader of other people's message, their abilities from all the days we can make a positive change to have that we want to see in society. Something like that, wow, Google was really not, do, not doing it for this one. What do you say to the people who disagree with Miss Venezuela taking place in the midst of COVID-19? I could see that question being asked also on Miss USA. Great answer. Despite the circumstances that we are living in the midst of a pandemic, Venezuela has many integral women who are only seeking to be a voice and image of society that needs to be made more visible and adverse moments like that we are experiencing. It is necessary that we have a few positive moments to be able to concentrate on the negative moments as we are in a pandemic. So basically an uplifting message. We have a powerful tool at our disposal to impact the world through digital media platforms and to make technological revolution to minimize the loss of values that exist in society today. Not really sure about that. Google translation. She said something like, you can create a campaign where values such as love, respect, tolerance, and solidarity are always promoted through social media networks that have undoubtedly impacted our society and I feel that I have the responsibility of being a spokesperson for the message where values are promoted and thus have a better society for all. Wow, wow, wow. These honestly were some really solid answers. It didn't seem like anyone was really stumped during the question and answer portion, so I was really impressed. It was just amazing, but I did notice that there was audience applause, so I'm wondering if they added that in. And if they did, I think it was a good choice because it would have sounded really strange to hear these great answers and hear no applause. The top five was Miranda, Zulia, Nueva Esparta, Rejon, Guyana, Guyana, Guyana. We're just gonna glaze over that one. And Guadico. So just such a strong batch of contestants. That's what I've said at the beginning when I was reviewing their headshots. You're just, they're amazing. Now we have our winners for international. And then we have the announcement of our Miss Universe Venezuela. And I'm just wondering when they heard that news, were they really just standing there in the studio and then they're like, okay, and it's you, react. Or did they know beforehand and then they got to react on stage? So I'm just curious about that that part of the filming process for this show, but you could tell how excited Zulia was. I was sad that we didn't see, or in the edit that I saw, I didn't see that official crowning. Everybody was just amazing as usual, and I'm really excited to see Venezuela prep their new queen for Miss Universe. Oh my gosh. Do you think Miss Venezuela this year is going to be a front runner? Yes or no? Why or why not? Tell me. Let me know what you think about her and all of the other international crownings for world and international. Give me your thoughts. Give me those predictions. Tell me what you know and just come back for new episodes. I would appreciate that. Please don't forget to subscribe and meet me next week. On next Wednesday is when my new episode will be out. And also I've been dropping in some little, little extra ones here and there for you to enjoy. So I hope you had fun on this episode. I had lots of fun watching this show. I was super impressed with all the gowns. I would say for the 2020 season, they probably had the best gowns that I've seen from all the national pageants that I've watched. So very, very, very well done, Miss Venezuela organization, and good luck to all the new queens.